What is the most statistically improbable thing to happen to you? Was present in two different blockbuster video stores in two entirely different cities when people accidentally drove their cars through a window. I was at the final table in a poker tournament, 50k, and was dealt 2 to 3 of hearts. 4, 5, 6 of hearts slops. After getting the pot nice and big, the guy across from me flips over 7 to 8 of hearts. I got home, and calculated the odds. I don't remember exactly what they were, but they were astronomically low. When I was younger, me and some friends went to go sunbathe at the beach. After about 10 minutes, I opened my mouth really wide to yawn, and a seagull shits directly into my open mouth. The odds of this happening are probably absurd, but it somehow still managed to happen to me. When I was in 7th grade, and sleeping at a friend's house, I woke up at 3.14 a.m. in a sweat and very freaked out. I woke my friend up, and told her I had to call my mom, because something was really wrong. She insisted that I had a bad dream, and convinced me to go back to bed. Around 7.30 a.m., her mother woke us up, and told me to call my mom. My grandpa had a stroke, and was flown by helicopter to a large hospital a few towns over. I didn't think to ask until the shock had worn off what time it had happened. My mom said my grandma called 911 at 3.15 a.m. I think that was pretty improbable. I'm American, but did a study abroad in Australia, and on the first night there the dorm I was staying in had a big gathering so all the students, both locals and people from all over the world, could get to know each other. We played some game that involved making up your pawns to name or something, where you took the name of your first pet and the street you grew up on. This girl and I had the same street name, and I found out she grew up two blocks away from where I did, but we'd never met, until we went to school together 10,000 miles away. One time when I was much younger, I wanted to believe I was magic. So young reverend decides to practice a card trick, that he just made up. I draw a card from the deck at random, look at it, memorize it, and replace it back in the deck. I then proceed to shuffle all the cards several times and then without looking, remove cards from random parts of the deck, until I'm left with one card. I shit you not, it was the card I had originally. Okay, this is a bad story, and I meant no harm. I honestly didn't know that it was an offensive term. I apologize to any little people who I most certainly have offended. When I was in high school, I was walking through a Walmart in South Carolina, telling my friend a story about how I overheard someone being robbed a knife point, and how when I came around the corner of the building to help, I saw that the man doing the robbing was a little person. When I got to the point where I revealed that fact, I did it by shouting it was a midget. Well, it just so happens that a little person worked at that particular Walmart, and we passed the aisle she was standing in, just as I shouted that. She heard. I apologized and left the building immediately. So, two years later, while walking through a different Guam at several states away, Missouri, I was telling another friend that story, and how I had made an ass of myself, while telling the previous story. I'm sure you can guess what happened. Just when I got to the part, where there had been a little person overhearing me shout it was a midget, I, of course, did it by shouting there was a midget right there, while indicating down the next aisle. While standing just a few feet down that aisle, on a step stool, stocking shelves, was a little person who heard me. I apologized and left the building immediately. Now, at this point you should probably assume this is bullshit and add this story to the list of things that never happened. Unfortunately it is all true. Even more unfortunately, I found this occurrence to be so ridiculously unlikely that I had to tell someone about it. And I did. I remembered it suddenly, while walking in a Walmart with my, at the time, girlfriend. This time in Maryland. And it played out exactly the same as before. Instead of apologizing, I just screamed what the fuck, and left the building immediately. So, I don't tell that story anymore. First because nobody would ever believe it, and second because I'm afraid to add another layer. Whoever the little person reading this is, and I fucking, know there is one, I'm sorry. I don't mean to offend, I was just stupid. The best thing about this question, is that everyone should have at least one statistically improbable thing, that has happened to them. 
If they don't, then the statistically improbable thing that has happened to you is that no statistically improbable thing has ever happened to you. My friend was fooling about with a brand new deck of cards, unshuffled, and decided to do a magic trick. He told me to pick a card, then put it randomly back in the deck. He figured that he would know my card, because it would be the only one out of order. He looked through the deck, and couldn't find my card. It turns out I had randomly put it back in the right spot. I told him, that I knew what I was doing the whole time, and that I was the real magician. When I was younger, I wanted to buy Pokemon Stadium, but didn't have enough money. So my dad buys me a scratch off ticket, and gives it to me. I scratch it off, and it's the exact amount I needed to buy it. Nothing that lucky has ever happened to me since. I was golfing with my dad one day, and he hit his tee shot on a par 5 about 200 yards from the green. The group in front of us was apparently in the woods, and when they came out, they noticed the golf ball in the fairway, and picked it up. As per the rules of golf, he had to drop a ball as near to the spot where it had been picked up, with no penalty. He then hit his next shot in the hole, for a 2 on a par 5, albatross, double eagle. These are significantly rarer than hole in ones, and I suspect he is the only person, to ever make one using two different golf balls in the process. Less than a month later, he made a hole in one. The worst part of it all is he's about a 10 handicap, and I'm a scratch golfer who used to play in very competitive tournaments. He now has one albatross, and three hole in ones, I have none of either. Very first time at a casino I played the slots for about 3 hours on just $10. I had gotten up to about $30 at one point, but was waiting on some friends, so I kept playing, minimum bet of 40 cents each time. Went from $17, and changed without hitting anything whatsoever, not even a 4 cent hit, to exactly $2. Got mad and hit maximum bet, using up my 2 bucks, and got up to walk away. About 6 steps later I hear loud ringing and everyone started turning around. Won $125 on my very last spin. TL, doctor, hit the jackpot my first time at a casino on my very last spin. Also, I went to watch my grandpa play in a doubles golf tournament when I was about 10 years old. His partner cancelled last second and the rules said that he had to have a partner and you had to let the other person hit every 3 or 4 strokes. I end up playing on his team and he lets me play the bare minimum, just putting in the fairway every now and then. He was so good that even adding a stroke each hole was keeping him close. Anyways, last hole, par 5, we are in second by 4 strokes, and he hits it into a water trap on first stroke. So now we either have to make it on this shot to win, or the next to tie, and it's my turn. Knowing that we won't win, he tells me to try as hard as possible. By this time we've got a crowd watching, so to show off I take a running start, like I saw on Happy Gilmore, and pummel the ball. It drops straight down to the water, but skips twice on the water, hits a huge rock on the opposite side, and shoots straight up in the air. Not only do I manage to chip it in for the win, but it's a pin shot, hitting the flag, and dropping straight down. TL, doctor, won a golf tourney, when I was 10 on our last chance, by making a happy Gilmore style shot. One time in elementary school I was picked to win a huge Tigger stuffed animal. It was a fundraiser drawing, and the more you sold the better chances you had of winning the giant tigger. I didn't sell anything, and there were about 400 kids in the school, most of which who sold stuff in the fundraiser. That means I had probably a 1000th chance of winning. I still have that tigger stuffed animal at my house. Blowing a soap bubble outside, and watching as it traveled 50 feet straight ahead, under the canopy of a citrus tree, stopped just shy of a 6 feet tall wooden fence, abruptly rose straight in the air, curled up and over the top of the tree, back down to our level, traveled back toward where I blew the bubble from, and landed on the blow stick thingy. Not sure what the odds are, but one time, just messing around by myself I flipped a coin 10 times, and got heads every time. I was pretty amazed and decided to quit right then and there. Shortly thereafter, I told a friend about it, and started flipping another coin. I was certainly not trying to repeat it, but damn if I didn't get 10 heads in a row, at which point I quit again. We were both pretty amazed. True story, not a trick coin. Wasn't even the same one between the different days. I never have any luck gambling, 
however, go figure. Not me but my brother was on a trip in Austria, and one of his favorite teachers from several years prior, high school, recognized him a crowded railway station. Apparently he was traveling between countries finding short term jobs teaching English to students. When I was 14 there was a girl I'd usually see with mutual friends at the local mall. I had a crush on her, but before I said anything about it, she moved away to Florida. Never saw or heard from her again. We lived in Wisconsin. I still do. Fast forward 11 years. I'm in Florida, and jokingly think on the trip there how it would be funny to run into the girl. I have no idea where in Florida she had went, so the idea was absurd. Like the second night I'm there, I got to a bar, and she is one of the workers. I talk to her, and find out it is in fact her. I go nuts on how improbable the whole thing is, but to her it's really no big deal. She doesn't give a shit. We exchange emails, or whatever, but never keep contact. Maybe you internet strangers will appreciate the odds more than she did. I lost a game of chance, so many times, that the odds of such a streak were, 5 6, 40 equals 0, 0 6 percent. I played Roll Up the Rim, annual Tim Hortons coffee contest with supposed 1 6 chances of winning per cup, for a month straight, and didn't win once. At the time I was a university student, and drinking at least one, often two Tim Hortons coffees per school day and occasionally one or two on the weekend. I don't know exactly how many cups I'd rank, but 40 seems like a pretty good conservative estimate for the month. When I was a kid I had a small white foam plane that would do loop de loops when you threw it. I would play with it for hours in front of my house. Once, when I failed to catch it, it came round and hovered next to my knee for about 2 seconds, then stuttered and fell. It seemed impossible and obviously stuck with me. Playing Axis and allies against my brother, I was invading a territory with a superior force, whose offensive power was primarily fighters. Out of 14 fighters, he rolled 10 kills, one on a six-sided die, with his anti-aircraft. I lost the battle in the game because of that. Actually I just discovered this a few days ago. I have lived in Asia since the early 1990s. In 1999 on Usenet, the old days version of Reddit, for you whippersnappers, I met a random guy who was living in Washington state, an IT consultant. We became fast friends. In the mid 2000s he moved to Nick, I met him in real life during a business trip there, and then later back to his hometown in Ohio. Three years ago this week he died suddenly of massive heart attack, and died at the tragically young age of 39. I mourn his loss to this day. Meanwhile, several years earlier, my stepsister in Maryland, where I was born and raised, married a guy who lives in Baltimore, and they started a new life together. Two days ago, on the anniversary of my friend's untimely death, I posted a little tribute on Facebook for lack of anything more appropriate. My stepsister's husband saw it, and sent me a message, that boggled my mind. He had known my late friend, having worked with him, when he interned at a company in upstate New York in 1997. Out of 300 million people in America, I randomly met one online, who knew somebody else on the other side of the country, who ended up marrying my stepsister. What are the odds? Went to the grocery store one day, mom never lets me get a 12 pack of soda, but she did for no particular reason that day, I've always been a drive, pepper fan, but for some reason I just wanted to try something new, looked around, saw a pepsi box pretty torn up with some tape was on it, thought to myself, no one's gonna buy this piece of shit, I'll give it a good home. About 5 sodas in, and about a week after the purchase, I pull out a golden can. I just won 4 free adult price tickets to SeaWorld in San Antonio worth about $60 each. It was a promotion for the new Atlantis ride for time reference, but the story doesn't end there. I got my 3 best friends to come with me, however one ended up having surgery, tore his ACL. Surgery was set the day we were supposed to go, and the other got the flu the day before we were set to leave. So me and my buddy show up with two extra tickets thinking we'll just give them away, since they were free anyway and tis the season, was about two weeks before Christmas. When we saw this family in the ticket line that consisted of a mom, dad, and five kids, it was pretty obvious they weren't well off and this was a huge deal to the kids. So I walked up to the dad, asked him to step aside for a second, explained that the tickets were legit, and how I won them. 
I put the tickets in his, his face was in between baffled and shocked, said happy holidays, and we entered the park. About 3 hours later as we were leaving the penguin exhibit, we saw the family passing, by having an awesome time. We waved, the dad spotted us and jogged over. He said he couldn't believe that the tickets were real, and how grateful he was. He pulled out his wallet, and asked if he could give us some cash for our gift. We politely declined, and told him to spend it on his family and to make this experience as memorable as possible. I saw his eyes water up, before he gave each of us the biggest bear hug I've ever gotten. As we parted ways as the entire family waved at us, and we waved back with the biggest smiles. Not so much statistically improbable for me, but was for the dad I suppose. TLDR, one free Sea World tickets, gave them to a random dad who turned out to really need them, hopefully made a few kids Christmases a bit better. When most of us were in school, we all had to participate in fire drills. We also had fire drills on the school bus. Both seemed like a waste of time. My high school actually did catch on fire once, and we all had to evacuate. Someone lit garbage cans on fire in the boys room, and caused some extensive damage. I was on a school bus that caught on fire. It had a transmission problem, and it caused a fire, after going up a long section of road at a steady incline. In 4th grade, when Neopets was the greatest website on the internet, I went into the username and pretty much spammed the middle row of my keyboard. I did the same thing for the password, and click submit. I fucking logged onto someone's account with the name of Adasagagg with the password like Lgagjoldfap. They had a starving pet that was adopted ages ago. When I was a kid there was a raffle going on for my town's little league baseball. There were probably several hundred raffle tickets sold. My mom bought me three tickets. In the raffle, there were two grand prizes, a signed baseball bat, by Justin Upton, if anyone is a baseball fan, and a signed hockey stick by everyone on our semi-pro team. After a few giveaways it was time to announce the winner of the first prize, the hockey stick. Lo and behold, one of my tickets won it. Go me. Later in the day, they announced the winner of the baseball bat. And of course I won that too. I walked up to claim the baseball bat, while also holding the hockey stick, effectively making everyone there extremely jealous. I was accused of cheating. TL. Doctor I won both grand prizes at a raffle of a several hundred people with my three tickets. Broke back in motorcycle slash auto collision, had back pulled straight, perfect application of traction to a spinal injury, by being run over by the same car, and dragged 40 feet by my skull. Instead of a wheelchair, I get to walk, with lots of pain. Good times.